Jesus. Trust and believe in that. That he is alive. He's real. He is here right now. He's in the throne room. And he is working it out. He's working it out for our good. And we will have the victory. Amen. We are more than victorious in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us again tonight. I hope that you're ready for this awesome Bible study. It's a blessing to be in the presence of God, yes, to be yes, together, yes. gathered with our brothers and sisters in Hallelujah. Christ, right. and we would love to pray for you. So if you have any prayer requests, please send them in to 407-490-4019. Again, the number is 407-490-4019, and we are going to recite Psalm 91. We're going to declare it, declare it with power. So let's all go to Psalm 91, and let's begin. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him I will trust. And surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall yeah, not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. And no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. And you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, and the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's a powerful word. And now let's welcome Pastor Street, who's going to bless us with the word. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Wonderful. All right. I think I'm going to bring this down, changing the setup a little bit. Okay. You gonna sit down there? Yeah. I wanna sit there. Change the setup and sit down there. There you go. Oh. Why not? Yeah, Why not, right? Yeah, right. Let's try something different. Okay. Bible study. Um uh Am I clear? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, uh God has ways of doing things. Oftentimes the problem with mankind is we expect God to do it according to our own understanding. And that's where we will end up having a lot of trouble, a lot of struggle. And uh, if there is somebody that has fresh ideas, do you believe it is God? Amen. There is so much... There is so much that you and me have not explored in him that is so new, so fresh. So uh, we always believe and say God is doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. But we are not ready for new ways. New thing is never going to happen without new ways. New ways doesn't always mean they're not, there is right or wrong. You haven't seen it yet. You haven't seen it yet. Just because we have not seen something yet doesn't uh, uh, prove to us that what we are doing is right or what we are doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the biggest challenges the early church has to go through. What they were doing was a new thing. It was a, it was a new thing in the uh, 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 time when the church was going through the, uh, the initial or uh, birthing season, however you want to put it, when they were going through that, it was all new. People didn't understand. 
people didn't, uh, 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 was not able to connect with it. But when that flow came in, people participated in it. People objected it. So depending on which side you will fall, you either can take advantage of the new flow or you will oppose the new flow. So we just need to understand where we are standing. The problem many times is we are not ready for the flow because of our ignorance. Believe it or not, the Bible calls ignorance a sin. The Bible calls ignorance a sin. sin. That's why the Bible calls you to repent of your ignorance. If it weren't a sin, it won't say repent of it. <clears throat> Amen? So, uh, I forgive your days of ignorance. Why would God need to forgive your days of ignorance if it wasn't days of sin? Because mm -hmm. you know better. Amen. You, you haven't been exposed to things. You haven't done it that way. So, just because of that, doesn't give you any excuse to say God didn't work or God doesn't, uh, is not operating. Right now, uh, the things that we see, the things that are happening in our society, the devil tries the best to make you believe that God is not working. <laughs> Let me tell you something. God may not be working in the old ways. Amen? Amen. He might be doing something new that you and me have to fall in line with. Oh, that's true. We just need to participate with the flow so we may reap what God has in store for us. That was the difference with the early church. That's our study, right? The Bible study that we are going through, the study of Acts, you know, uh, 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 Dunamis, the study of Acts. We want the power of God coming to mankind. It's a totally new concept. Nobody uh, went through that. It was totally new. It was, uh, uh, they haven't experienced those things. Many things are unrelatable. So we have, they are trying to relate to something that is not relatable. The best way they are able to bridge the gap is through, most of the times is through prophecy. Prophecy is the only one that can take you to connect with what is happening in a new way. God speaks, God, that's why even the Bible clearly says, uh, uh, I will not hide these things from my prophets. I will reveal them to my prophets. God says that. The reason is there is a new way that is happening. It is still lined up with his word. But the manifestation of it doesn't make sense to us. If you still hold on to our old ways. Amen? Amen. So um, uh, with that in mind, I want us to go back to our study that we are doing the uh, Acts study, it's important, you know, um, to get into the depths of it, to understand uh, the early church. I also want to repeat something to you today. What early church has gone through is only uh, something you and me need to understand as a sowing time. How many of you believe sowers and reapers are different? Sowing job and reaping job is different. Mm -hmm. Anybody that has uh, experience with farming, anybody that has an experience with growing, unlike my wife, she only knows how to kill. <laughs> Any plants you give, she can kill. It doesn't matter. That's why I keep buying her flowers, because they can die. If I buy her a plant, it's not going to live. No matter what kind of a plant it is, she makes sure they're dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> she has she has that kind of a power <laughs> so be careful around her okay <laughs> but um, uh, anybody that has uh, gone through that sowing and reaping you understand the process is different from sowing and reaping mm -hmm. so if you believe yourself as the church of end days. How many of you believe that? Amen. 
We believe that we are the church of end days, right? right. Mm -hmm. So that means we are harvesters. Mm -hmm. What they have done as sowers, we need to understand how we can go back at it. The sower starts from the bottom up. The harvester goes from the top and down. Are you with me? I'm just giving you a simple example. Think about it for a moment. Corn. When the corn is sown, it is sown in the ground, and it started, starts growing and growing and growing. It becomes a big stalk. I'm not sure if you have ever seen the corn stalks, how they look. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, uh, then after that comes the corn. And the corn is not coming at the seed level. Corn is coming somewhere at the top. Mm -hmm. Now the harvester, when the harvester goes, he has to pluck the corn. First is the top. The corn is on the top. You pluck that. After you get it, then you go back and destroy the whole corn plant or whatever you want to call that thing. Stop. You have to kill it. You have to kill it so you can have uh, it ready for the next harvest. Right. Next season of sowing. So, um, the, 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 in other words, what happens is, simply to put, as the sower soweth the seed, he builds gaps. There will be gaps built on purpose for the harvester to fill. That is the process. The sowing and reaping. Isn't that what the, what the word of God says? As long as the sun exists, this is my covenant, God, God says. There will be seed time and harvest. harvest. Okay. There are the lasting impacts of life. Anything that you begin is seed time. Amen? Amen? That is the beginning of it. So then, after the beginning of it, you will also go into the harvest time. So now, uh, if you are connecting yourself as the harvesting church... I would also want you to look at the early church to see which way we approach. There will be, these two things have to come together, the sowing and the reaping. If the sower didn't sow the seed, the reaper has nothing to reap. If the reaper doesn't go reap, the sower's labor is in vain. All right? So the church needs to understand most of it right now is how to reap. We all, most of the church learn how to sow. We never know how to reap. The Bible also talks about it as receiving. Whoever believes and receives in his heart and he will have it. Amen. Amen. If belief is the seed, receiving is the harvest. Right. Okay. Then you will have the manifestation, which would be the fruit. Okay. We are looking at the fruit without learning how to receive. Right. Without knowing how to harvest. Without harvesting, there is no selling. There is no uh, uh, <clears throat> income. There is no production. So we forget the key factor of harvesting. And we have a concept a little bit of here and there about harvesting the souls. Which is a very important part of the kingdom of God, I agree. But remember, it is not just about people. God did not put you on this earth just about people. He wanted us to represent him, amen? Amen. God takes care of all the affairs, not just human affairs. Okay. Not just human affairs. He takes care of all the affairs. So that means we have to expand ourselves beyond the limitation of, okay, people. We have to go. That's why he talks about things in the Bible so much. In the book of Matthew, when we talk about seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. 
shall be added unto you. All these things. It's not just one or two, there are so many. Even though uh, it's a good agenda to say that uh, people are the most important thing, salvation is the most important thing, which is the most important miracle anybody could experience is salvation. No doubt about that. There is no doubt about it. But salvation is seed time. It's a seed. It's a starting point. Yeah. There is still a harvest that has to come. Amen? Amen? Otherwise, there is no value for the seed that has been sown. Salvation. Amen? Amen. So if you are alive, that's why Jesus calls continually, not just about grafting, I am the one, ye are the branches. He doesn't stop there. And he goes, you need to bear fruit. Harvest has to be there. So the seed of salvation that has been given to us, that has been sown into us, has to be taken to the next levels. That would be an influence. A, God wants us to create an area of influence. That's why he says you are the salt and the light. You know, if you put a small thing of salt in a big part of stew, it influences the whole area. It does. Okay. The same thing is true with light. It, it expands itself. It goes and it goes beyond. Now the problem is if you don't know, I mean like this light that we have on top, it can probably go beyond, but our walls are blocking it. Mm -hmm. People outside can see the light in this room. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So your light has to be exposed. That is why Jesus says, don't put the lamp under the bed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Because your lumens, your, your, your uh, 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 brightness, your light, the exposure... The area of influence has to increase. When we are not looking at ourselves, our life as a life of harvest, we don't we forget the purpose of us. Now let me be very clear. Why do you sow a seed? If there is no harvest. Why you got to be saved if you are not going to be fruitful? Salvation should have meaning. Amen? Amen? The true meaning of salvation is fruitfulness. Because Bible, Jesus, Jesus says, you bring glory to my Father by bearing much fruit. Now, unfortunately, people don't even know what the fruit salvation would bring. We consider something as fruit that is not even fruit. Right. Now just for a, 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 a simple, uh, um, call it a diversion or exposure, let's go to the book of um, Ephesians with me. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Galatians. Galatians. All right, Galatians, 5th chapter, starting at verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, mm -hmm. fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Pay attention to that. What, what does that end with? Will not? 
inherit the kingdom of God. It is not talking about entering into the kingdom of God. It's only talking about inheriting the kingdom of God. <clears throat> That's about manifestation or harvest. You will not be able to reap the harvest if these things being led by your flesh is being a prominent part of your life. Amen. Whatever the seed that has been sown into your life, even the seed of salvation that has been sown into our life, if, we are, uh, uh, if the fruit is not coming up, I want us to check if the flesh is taking over us. If the flesh is taking over us, you and me will never be able to inherit the eternal life of God, the kingdom of God, the Zoe kind of life. That's what Bible talks about. Zoe life, a life uh, living in promises. That's the life worth living. Okay? So now, uh, now let's go to the same thing. Uh, Galatians 5th chapter, 22nd verse right now. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, now what is it? Fruit of the? Spirit. Spirit. All right, what are we talking about? Harvest, right? Right. Now there is a harvest that we're talking about. Fruit of the Spirit. This is something that needs to be brought out of us as a result of salvation. This cannot be brought out of us if you are not saved. When there is no seed, there is no harvest. Amen? Amen. Uh -huh. When there is no salvation, there is no the fruit of spirit. Uh -huh. It's not going to happen. Even though many Christians are trying to replicate the harvest without the seed. Many churches try to teach you how to be nice, how to be this, how to do that. They're trying to be, make, teach you fruitfulness without even sowing the seed. <clears throat> that is called works. You are fabricating results, manipulating results, distorting the results. This is how we end up having weird strands of harvest. Right now, you know, in the, in the U.S., you don't even know what is the original structure of corn. It has been uh, uh, mutated so many times, or modified. modified, however you want to put it. It has gone through so much that you don't know the original structure of it. Because we are manipulating the harvest. And that's exactly what's the problem with church. We are defining the fruit of the spirit. We are defining the fruit that you and me should be bearing. The church is defining instead of letting the seed define the harvest. You know, when I was growing up as a kid, it was like, oh, crossbreed. It was a big thing. Oh man, this is hybrid or crossbreed. We would talk about those things and I'm like, uh, oh wow, this is crazy. We would think like that. Who, who would have thought that they could get these two things together? And now that has become, the, uh, become our life. And I'm, I'm not against organic or anything like that. I don't know if organic really exists. I'm, I'm just being, call me uh, a naysayer or whatever it may be. You know, when we don't know what is the original, how can you say this is the original? Mm -hmm. It's just a way for uh, the, the grocery store to make a lot of money, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I'm not going to step into that line. But I'm just saying, like, we, we, we have, the church have become like that. We have become too much of this grocery store trying to tell ourselves, trying to define ourselves we are better than them. We are better than this. We are better than... We are trying to do all those things. 
when you really are not working at the seed level. That is where we have to go. Go back, you know, oftentimes we hear the saying, let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to the basis. Let's go back to the, you know, we want to go back to the starting point. That's our real struggle right now. We are not humbling ourselves enough to go back to the basis. Go back to the seed. When you understand the seed, then you will understand the harvest. If you understand the early church, you will understand the later church. The harvest church. So here, go ahead. The fruit of the Spirit is? Love, mm -hmm. joy, mm -hmm. peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Let me ask you this thing. In all these things, do you see being nice? That is kind doesn't mean it is nice. <laughs> you know, right now we have we have a big demand of wanting to be nice to each other. You want to be nice to each other. In the pretense of trying to be nice to each other, we forget what kindness is. What is kindness? Now let me ask you, let me, I'll, I'll tell my predicament, my, 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 my situations are things like that. So um, when I am uh, doing uh, uh, um, anything new, when I'm trying to do something new, um, I'm expecting, like I'm doing it for the first time, and somebody comes and uh, uh, they're trying to um, be, try to be nice to me. And uh, even though what I am doing is wonky, or it needs a, an uplift, or it needs a correction that could help it, you're like, okay, I'm just going to be nice to you. You did good. So are you being kind to me? Because you haven't helped me grow. You have not helped me grow. <clears throat> Because in your niceness, I'm confused now. So it puts me in a situation where I can't trust people when they say, I love you. Are they saying, really, I love you? Are they saying, I love you, just to be nice? Mm -hmm. right. Okay, come on now. Are you with me now? So this is where the hybrid fruits are coming into our lives so much that have distorted the true harvest of God. If I love you, if I love you, when you are doing right, I want to stand with you. When you are doing wrong, even in love, Bible says, we speak truth. Amen. If you are not able to speak truth and you are trying to pretend that being nice and say calling it love, I tell you what, you are fearful. You're just walking in fear. I love you so much. Like it's, it's simple, simple like this. A blind person is walking down the hill, and you're sitting there and looking at that blind person, and you're like, okay, I don't want to hinder him. You know, he's going. Let me not. Let me not. Oh, oh I want to be nice. You know, the blind dude is going to die. He's going to fall off the cliff. The true kindness would have jumped in and said, brother, you're about to fall. He could argue with you. No, are you dumb? I can feel this thing. Dummy, you're not seeing. That's what Jesus said. Oh, you hypocrite, right? I'm just trying to take the liberty of calling dummy, but that's... <laughs> he called all kinds of names there. Is he being nice there? Now, I'm just presenting a simple example here for us to understand how the harvest can be distorted easily. That's the only point I'm making here. So try not to put your own spin on the harvest. This is how it should be. Just because it is popular in the society, in the realm, in the people, that, are in, in, that is what is the demand of the hour. Let's make the society nicer. What is nicer? 
lying to each other? Is that being nice? Now think about it. That is exactly what we're doing right now. We lie, lie, lie to each other. Marriage is completely dependent on lies. That's why it doesn't stand the trials. You can't tell your spouse when the spouse has done something wrong. Because we are in, the, in, that, in that situation, I just want to be nice. I just want to be nice. But God didn't call us to be nice. Be kind. We cannot leave honesty. Amen? Amen. So that is how the devil is masking the harvest. There is no other person who is doing that other than him. And we, are in our ignorance, we are falling into it. That is why if you see now the church, the supposed to be the, uh, the, the, the uh, harvest church, look at what kind of propaganda is going on in the church right now. That is too far away from God's truth. God's plan. But that is popular. That is what is most common. That doesn't mean that is the original. All right, are you with me on that? Yes. You, you agree, right, with me on that on that idea? Like you know, we have this going on. Like we're trying to pretend. We are, you know, there's a lot of pressure on everybody to pretend. A lot of pressure. I'm nowhere trying to say go run over people. I'm nowhere trying to say go offend people. I'm not saying that, but our words should have value. Our actions should have value. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be second guessing. Right. My wife, uh, it'll be a shame for me if my wife guess, second guesses me when I say I love you. Won't that be a shame of my life? The very one woman, I think I could, I could die for her. If that woman doubts me when I say I love you, I'm like, what is the situation? Mm -hmm. That for me is not success. It's a failure. So that is where I'm trying to go after. That's where it is not about being nice. That's the fruit that we have derived. That's the fruit that we have defined. Because we don't want honesty. Mm -hmm. Let's face it. Let's face it, nobody, if somebody comes, hey, you gained weight. I don't like hearing that. You know, all I hear it, oh, I think you have gained weight. All I hear it, oh, you fat. That's all I'm hearing. And I'm getting offended in this. In my niceness, I said, oh, you look pretty. No, you're not. I mean, Right now, everything is uh, defined differently, but that's not the point that I'm saying, oh, you look healthy. No, you don't. You're not healthy. I can tell you, oh, you look great. That doesn't mean your heart is working good. True. <clears throat> so that's where we have to understand what we are expecting for ourselves. Our expectation sets the tone for harvest. What are you expecting as the harvesting church will, ex will set the tone for harvest? Say that again. Whatever you are expecting. Our expectation. Yes. Your expectation of harvest or harvest church will set the, so sto will set the tone for the harvest. Um, you have to decipher it carefully, that statement. It's setting the tone. That doesn't mean that is right. That is what we like to hear. That is what we like to experience. That is what we love to have in our lives. That doesn't mean that is what God has intended when he sowed the seed. So, now, my point for us is, 
If you are looking at a distorted harvest, don't worry about the harvest. Let's work on expectations. Let's, let's work on receiving. When you can work on receiving, the manifestation will be fulfilled. Like, I, I, I want to tell you in the simplest, simplest way. Thank you, Lord. So there is mango, mango tree that is growing up. I think we can go, right? I'm trying to build something here that we can work with what is our role. It's a role-driven society, you know that? The kingdom of God is role-driven. You got to play the roles. The moment you understand you are playing a role, you will play your role better. Okay. Uh, anyway, if you have a, a, a mango uh, tree that is sown, and you always saw, you always saw the tree, and at a certain point you go and pluck the tree, pluck the pluck the fruit off, and uh, you call it okay. This is harvest, and you start using it. But you always plucked it when it was like about about this size. I'm just putting an example. About this size, you plucked it. But you probably don't know that if you had let it grow on the tree, it may have grown this big. Mm -hmm. okay. Because our expectation is set to this. Okay. We are stopping the harvest there. So if only we can let the Lord of Harvest, amen, if only if we can let the Lord of Harvest define what is harvest. He is the one who is seeing the fields are white. Yeah. Not you and me. Right. When he gives you the sickle, you go after it. What is your harvest? He has already seen it. You need to learn how to glean it. How to receive it. How to take it. Part of receiving is taking, you know. It won't fall into your lap. You need to take it. When we don't have a mind of harvest, we can never reap harvest. <clears throat> You have to fight for the best jobs there is. I should be getting this much of a paycheck. Fight for it. I should be going in this line. Fight for it. That is your harvest. That's the seed that God has sown in your heart as a vision, isn't it? If you don't know how to receive or reap that harvest, what's the point of God sowing the dream into your heart? What's the point of God sowing that vision into your heart? You have to receive it. This is my harvest. You know, I like Deline. She just was like, at one point she decided, okay, this is my time to get me myself a nursing degree. In all reality, she passed all that age group. I don't care what I have, what I don't have. I know when she moved to Orlando, she didn't even have food to eat. She was willing to sacrifice all that. But I'm going after my goal. Amen. I see her hustling every day because she knows this harvest belongs to me. Amen. This is my harvest. She hustles. She fights with people. She fights with sister. Whatever it may be, I wanna, I'm going to get my thing. That is kingdom of God. That is receiving your harvest. I want to tell you something. Women are so good at it. Don't lose your place. Don't be passive. Okay. Let me, let me uh, uh, encourage you one more thing and we will go back. Go to the Bible study. Why? <laughs> we didn't even start the Bible study yet. <laughs> okay, this is Bible study. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, all right, there you go. Um, where was I? Okay. <laughs> so, 
Look at this, I had all these notes. I don't, I don't even have a notes here. Oh, but anyway. <laughs> um, when God sends, when God was planning to take Israel out of Egypt, we talk about the splitting of the Red Sea, we talk about this, we talk about all those things. There is one more detail, we just breeze through it. That one detail always fascinates me. How many of you know Jews were slaves? Yes. Can I imply that Egyptians were their masters? Yes. Sure? Right? Egyptians were their masters. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lord of the host comes to these Jewish people and says, go collect all their gold. They were their masters. Now God is telling, Bible says, he pulled them out with an outstretched arm. Outstretched arm doesn't mean he did all the work. He made you do things also. God is not a magician. Let me repeat that. God is a miracle maker. What I mean by that? Miracles involve you. When Jesus was on this earth, he always used people. Their quirks, their weaknesses, their failures, their shortcomings, and in through that he turned it into a miracle. Can he not bring a, 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 a wine from thin air? He could, right? But he didn't. He used people in the middle. Go fill the water. Go do this. Go do that. In other words, sometimes you have to face some situations that could be looking like shameful. Imagine that. I, I always imagine myself as pouring water and going to the master. You know, I'm glad Jesus have done it. I'm, sometimes I imagine myself like that too. That's a different story. But sometimes I imagine myself, this dude just came in. He was a carpenter. Now he wants me to pour water. How can I even think of this doing? You know, everybody around you will be looking, what you doing, dude? I'm pouring water. For what? I don't know. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? A situation where there will be a lot of shame against you. Can I ask you something? Can you be shameless? We have to come to, be a, come to a place of shamelessness for you to reap your harvest. We become shameless when you know your life is on the line. But when you are in comfort, you don't. You don't mind going to the food bank if you don't have food. Are you with me? Yes. But if you have enough to buy beans, you're like, okay, why should I go to food bank? That's, that's the human mindset, isn't it? But what God is saying is, I have prepared a meal for you in front of the presence of your enemies. Yes. Okay. You need to be comfortable to go eat with your enemies. If you avoid your enemies, what good does it do when God has prepared a meal for you? Mm. You could be having your food right in your lion's den. You got to go face it. <clears throat> Unless you face it, you will not find the honey that is in there. And then the, God gives the instruction to Jewish people, go collect the jewelry from your masters. You know whom he assigns for the task? 
Wait a minute. He doesn't give that instruction to men. Men are bad at collections. They can't collect. For the life of it, I can't do that. I just give my ta that task to my wife, she'll do it with no problem. They're good at collections. I mean, I don't know. I, I, it's so uh, uh, ironic. Uh, in my work, I work with a lot of uh, people that work for tax collectors. Most of the staff at tax collector's office are females. <laughs> oh, you guys know how to collect taxes. <laughs> you know, and yesterday I was talking to somebody that have done my uh, roof and the collections manager have called and she's a woman. The project manager was a guy. And when I talked to him, I, it's okay, you know, you talk to these people, they will take care of you. And like I talked to this uh, collections lady, she doesn't budge a thing. She makes me pay the whole bill. You know, even though I don't like it, that's the trait. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to appreciate it. In other words, you need to know what belongs to you. If you lose sight of what belongs to you, you will never fight for it. That is your harvest. What I am asking now, even the women that are around, around me, come teach me how to be a harvester. Because you are good at it. That's why God gave you the womb, not us. We fail at it miserably. Sometimes I see women looking at it as a painful thing. Could be. I, I've never been a woman. But, but. You got work for it. <laughs> I got work for it, no. Take our word for it. Oh, yeah, I will. <laughs> so uh, God, God puts us in a certain roles. We have to learn harvesting. We have to learn how to be a harvester. I'm encouraging, I'm challenging every one of us to come to a place where we can become better harvesters. This year 2021 should be something like that. Those women did not hesitate collecting. They collected every piece that belongs to them when they left. So I'm, I'm here to tell you it is time for the church to reposition itself to be the harvesters. Mm -hmm. So they may reap whatever belongs to us, the church, the body of Christ. Amen. The Bible talks about the wealth of the sinners. Is stored unto the righteousness. Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to harvest it, how in the world are you going to ever inherit it? Right. No. Right. You don't even know how to harvest your own harvest, much less you can get the, 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 the wealth of the sinners. True. Your seed is not just one fold seed. You're sowing it into multiple realms. God willing, one day I like to teach that. A seed has multiple realms that you sow into. Okay. It's not just one realm. Mm -hmm. The seed connects to so many areas. They said, we are in a good time where we are sowing money instead of goods like they did in the past. True. Okay. Because money is a result of so many things. Your time, your intelligence, your effort, your pain, your shame, everything goes into that money. And when you are sowing that, it is also going into so many realms of harvest. Okay. That we need to learn how to harvest. So he, he gives the thing here, the, the, we have to understand the fruit. Don't try to confuse uh, the fruit of the Lord thinking that this is the fruit of the Lord, this is not. Let the Lord of the harvest define it. When he says it is time to pluck it, then pluck it. Otherwise, all you are getting is half-baked goods. We are not going to the full fruitfulness that God has destined for us because we never understood harvest. 
And I'm bringing you to a point where you understand your harvesting role as an early, ch as a, as a uh, harvesting church. It's so important. You know, uh, no. how much ever, uh, the, the, I'm not trying to brag her, but how much ever she hustles, it excites me also. Deline, whenever I see her, she hustles a lot, but she is focused on her harvest. You know, in the midst of all those things, she doesn't miss one thing that blesses me so much. She never stops tithing. First thing is, let me pay my tithes. Let me figure this out first. Let me do that. And like, it excites me so much. Because her mind is so set on the harvest. I don't know all the other things. Whether I have food around my table or not. I know, Delin, you will testify for that. The many times she tithed, even when she didn't have food. She didn't have food, but she put that aside first she tithed. Because her mind is so driven into the harvest. Even today she may not, you know, she may not have all the things there. But she has the harvest mind. I know God give God will give this to me. Mm -hmm. I know God has set this for me. <clears throat> and I'm 100% I'm, 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 I'm positive that she's not putting her guard down until she gets what she wants. Right. Amen? Amen? Am I right, Delia? There you go. There you go. That is, that, that, is, that, is, that is what we have to be, harvesters. You know, we are all good givers, all good sowers. I'm challenging you Let's also become good harvesters. And that is what I believe God is challenging us right now as a harvesting church. All right, go with me. Let's now go to the book of Acts. Now we are going to the Bible study. Let's start the story now, right? <laughs> I'm sorry? 30 Acts. Acts 13. 13? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, oh, let's go to that and um, let's start from verse 33. Let's go refresher through it from 33rd verse. Yeah. God has fulfilled this for us, their children, in that he has raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second psalm, you are my son, today I have begotten you, and that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption. He has spoken thus, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Therefore, he also says in another psalm, you will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. Remember that. Remember that in your life. You are never going to see death in your life. You are anointed to be not corrupted. Amen. Amen. You are anointed to not get defeated. Defeat is not in you. Amen? Amen? Come on, say that. Amen. Defeat is not, not in me. me. Defeat is foreign for me. That's right. Because I am anointed. I am, I am empowered by God to succeed. Amen. You can only be defeated if you give up. Mm. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up saw no corruption. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. Are you with me? That is the inception. That is the seed time. That is the beginning. And when that forgiveness of sins is the concept that gets into your, our life so much, when we can adapt to that well, you will also understand your harvest. When you, if, if your life, in your life, if sin still has power, that means you're not a harvester. What do I mean by that? I, I'm not saying you cannot sin, though it would be ideal. 
We fall, we fail, we, we stumble. That's how it's human. Right? But even when we fall, the forgiveness is still active. Lord, I repent. Amen? Amen. That is hard way. That, that is forgiveness of sins. That being active in our lives. When, the, when sin is prevailing, there is no harvest. So let's kill the sin through forgiveness of sins. Is that for me? <laughs> ah, that's fine. Maybe she put a timer on me. <laughs> like after this time, you need to stop. All right. Uh, let's go on. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Yeah, that, that's a beautiful thing. Remember that. Justified. Beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken in the prophets come upon you. Mm. Behold, you despisers, marvel and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which you will by no means believe, though one were to declare it to you. Look at this. He is giving, a, bringing us to an awareness. That's one of the most important things we have to be aware of. Even though a seed is sown into your life, if you are not aware of certain things, you will never be able to get what you should be getting. So he gives the clear clarity here in the 41st verse where he says, Behold, you despisers. Now I want to ask you a simple question. Are you a despiser? Everybody would want to say no. Don't answer me. You don't need to answer me. But I want you to analyze yourself. If something was to happen around me, what am I? Am I a believer? Am I a despiser? The, the despiser doesn't mean he didn't see or he didn't respond. The Bible says he marveled. He marveled at the doing of the Lord. But it says, and perish. Think about that for a moment. The church is so much like that right now. Because they have become despisers instead of believers. Even though the Lord is doing something right in front of them, they are not able to adapt to it. That is what is at dispensation right now. Let's go. For I work a work in your days. A work which you will by no means, what? Believe. That's the belief. Again, the connection is believing. Can you believe God is working? Can you believe it is the Lord's doing? Can you believe in things that are happening around us? Can you believe in God? That's the most important equal part of the equation. It is not about the manifestation. It is your belief that is going to bring the manifestation. You could simply despise it. The one were to declare it to you. God is declaring some things into our lives right now. Mm -hmm. That my prayer is that your, our eyes will be opened to see what God is showing. Mm -hmm. How God is repositioning us. Mm -hmm. How God is intending for us to work. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Go ahead please. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. And contradicting and blaspheming, they opposed the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God 
should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. You, you, you see, a rejection has happened. Even though there was a crystal clear manifestation, <coughs> there is a rejection. That's why many times when Christians pray, pray and believe, God, give me a miracle so people may believe, it's not necessarily true. Sometimes when the manifestation, when the miracles happen, people reject it. So um, that's why our gospel should not be dependent on the miracles or non-miracles. Miracles are part of our life. It has to be part of our life. We are not dependent on them. They are just byproducts. They'll happen to me anyway. They'll happen. That's my life. When I'm walking in this path, it will happen to me. Amen? Amen. All right, go ahead. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many had been appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region, but the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city. You, you, you see that? Women got stirred up first. <laughs> you want a ruckus? Go to the women. All you need is women. Forgive me, but that is true. And that was the strategy there. Only a few men... But they brought all the women. <laughs> now let me be real here. If you want to win an election, all you need is women's support. Yeah. If you get the women to get behind the story, it's over. Mm -hmm. yep. Whatever rocks the emotions of women, legislates. Even though it's a fact of the matter, even though it's a very powerful thing, I want you to think about something. Am I swaying the right way? Am I going in the right direction? That's the most important thing you and me need to understand. It is not about how powerful you are. Are you using the power to do good? That's the most important part, isn't it? Yeah. So here, look at this. Jews stirred up devout. Not any ordinary street people. Devout and prominent women. So that's the most important thing you and me need to understand a strategy. Right now, everything is about strategy. The devil has strategies. This is one of the strategies the devil is playing right now so much in our society. The gospel has to, um, let me be very clear, all the women here, you are my sisters, my mothers, I appreciate all that. But I want you to also think about it, about from the truth. Let me, let me be very blunt, all right? Are you with me? You know, I, I still love you, right? And you still love me, right? Here it comes. There you go. <laughs> if any message that is being preached is not woman approved, it's going to be destroyed. Huh? That is the current situation. It has to be approved by women. That is a clear fact. Whether it is a message coming from the pulpit or whether it is coming from the White House, it doesn't matter. The woman has to approve it. If it is not approved, it's going to create a ruckus. That is the clear state right now we are in. You still love me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. 
Let the truth set us free, right? Amen. Yeah. Truth. We have become so emotionally driven that we are forgetting the truth. So I'm trying to encourage every one of us to look at something, the truth that should set us free, not our emotions. Amen. Okay. Even when your emotions are not working for you, the truth will work. So what do you want? Think about that for a moment. Right? Now let's go on. I'm going to keep moving as if nothing happened. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Now look at this thing. They were kicked out of the place and they were filled with joy. Think about that for a moment. They were rejected, but they were filled with God's joy. Which one will you consider as success? That is simple for us to say because you see it black and white. Yeah. But when you are going through the situations, yeah. when you are rejected by your own children, yeah. when you are rejected by your own family, when you are not invited to your own family's events, mm -hmm. come on somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Even when those things are still going on, if you check your spirit, there may still be the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you giving weight to? Their rejection or the joy of the Lord? Think about that for a moment. That should be our lifestyle. They were rejected, they were kicked out. They preached the truth. Truth. They preach the gospel, they preach the good news, and they were shunned. Now go ahead, read the 14th chapter. I'm finishing here. Now it happened in Iconium that they were together to the synagogue, they went together to the synagogue of the Jews, and so spoke that a great multitude, both of the Jews and of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. That is the key factor you need to understand. If you really understand this, you will understand what's the battleground. How the battle is being fought. Any spiritual battle that is being fought right now, any battle that is happening right now, is the key for all those things are here. The battle between belief and unbelief. The battle between Caleb and the rest of the spies. Caleb is the only one that believed that we can go possess the promised land. While all the other spies were like, they're bringing bad report. There are giants, there are this, there are that. And because of that, what happened? They missed their divine opportunity. So here, it's simple. The unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. The unbelief is driving the course. Isn't that what is happening right now? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Somebody don't know the difference between a man and a woman, I guess. <laughs> Did I go there? But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. <laughs> I'm moving on right now, right? All right. Therefore they, no. <laughs> yeah. Therefore they stayed there a long time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who was bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews and part with the apostles. Are you okay with division? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
If you don't understand division, don't live in end days. The unity of division. It sounds like a paradox, but it is beautiful. There is unity in division. Unless there is a division, there is true, not true unity. There has to be separation for there to be true unity. But anyway, let's go on. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Ly Lycaona, and to the surrounding region, and they were preaching the gospel there. Now, can I call this a fleeing church? A fleeing church. Fleeing. They are fleeing from one place to another place. One place, they were rejecting them. They are like, okay, let me go to the next. Let me go to the next. They had to keep doing that. That's the early church's job. All right, they're going from bottom up. Right. Now you are a harvesting church. You don't leave. <clears throat> you go reverse. Okay. We go collect. You go collect. We go reap. This is a seed that has been sown, and it needs to reap the harvest. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is how you are to fight for your nation. That is how you are to fight for your family. Now just move on. Let me just move on. You're not in the moving on business because your role is not a sower. Your role is a reaper. You don't move on. You have to get the harvest. Let me be very clear. If you don't get the harvest, there is nothing to spend. That's true. What the early church have done, it sold seeds. It kept moving from one to another. But the later church is not about moving away. It has to take back. The seeds that were sown in this land are meant for harvest. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. In God we trust is a seed. Okay. Amen. 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 It is time for us to go back for that harvest. In God we trust everywhere. Amen. Not just in currency. Everywhere. Do you see what is happening right now? The unbelief is trying to drive you out in, from that in God we trust. Drive you out of that seed. The founders and the people that have fought in the beginning, they sowed that seed. Now it is time for you to go back and get that harvest back. Mm -hmm. The foundation, the, 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 the thing that is happening right now, if you observe around what is happening in the, in the United States of America, is they are trying to destroy the seed. That's true. Mm -hmm. Amen. If we let it go, it goes. We don't have to fight with uh, uh, guns and bullets. We can fight the spiritual battle. Amen. You should be okay with it. That's what the pulpit is for. Amen. To be engaged in the battle, not to go take a sideline. Especially if you are the Harvest Church. Harvest is not happening on the sidelines. Harvest is happening in the main lines. Amen? Amen. If you want to be a harvester, you need to stay in the main lane, not on the side lane. If you really see what is happening day by day, the church is being pushed to the sideline. That's right. Thank you. It is being sidelined every day. That needs to be brought back. Yes, sir. You know, what we call a so-called Congress used to be a church. Yeah. Sundays, they did services there. Thousands of people gathered in there. That is the seed. They got pushed away. 
Now the harvester is coming. The harvesting church is coming. That is why we see a lot of chaos. Yes. In the recent past, the prayers in that arena have increased more than ever before. That is why he don't want you to come back because you know when you come, you're coming after the harvest. Yes. He doesn't want you to get back in there. The enemy is trying not to get that back in there because you know you're coming back with your sickles, with your collections that you want to bring the harvest. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So now you need to understand I'm a harvesting church. I'm not a sowing church. I'm not moving everywhere. Rather, I'm going in. Whatever, man. That's not our case. That is not our case. That's right. Amen? Amen? And that is what we have to go after right now. That mindset. And I'm praying that God will stir our hearts. Stir the hearts of the people in the church. That they will go possess what belongs to them. Amen. Not just get side sidelined. Right. Mm -hmm. The last few years, just the last few years, the wives of the church have grown. Just a slither. And now it needs it, they want to take it off. Yeah. The devil wants to take it off. Yeah. That's the battle here, if we really understand it. Mm -hmm. Right now, look at it. Look at the time. Have you ever seen in the history of the United States where the churches have been shut down? No. 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 For me. Tell me, it's, it, 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 don't tell me it's of God. No. No. It is not of God. He can't shut you in. God never wants the voice to be shut down. Instead, he wants it to be proclaimed even more. It is time for the blind Bartimaeus to rise up. And he says, Bible says, he screamed all the more. When people tried to shut him off, the Bible says the last blind Bartimaeus, he screamed all the more. Can we make a wild noise here? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's be some wild bats here. You know, you know, we need to be those people. The voice is going to go up no matter what you die, what you do. I'm going to keep my voice up. That should be us. That's why I'm saying we need to become more shameless. We still have to continue in that. I thought I was done, but I don't know. <laughs> we need to be those people like the blind Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on my nation. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on the U.S. You know, we need to declare that. We need to. All the more, all the more, all the more in the name of Jesus. Everything that is around us is trying to say, shut up. It is over. It is not over. No. It is not over. No. Maybe I need to stand up now. <laughs> you got to stir it up now. Oh, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit do that for us. Let him stir us up. Let him stir us up. Amen. Spirit in me. Amen. It ain't over. Amen. Nothing Amen. is over in your life. No, no, no. Let's not give up. Right. Instead, yeah. be ready to throw off your beggar garment. Yes. <laughs> That's what Lazarus did. I mean, Bartimaeus did. <laughs> it's coming. We have to come to that place. We have to put ourselves where we will have strong proclamations 
In God we trust. Amen. In the God of the Bible we trust. Not the God somebody is proclaiming over the Congress. Whether you have paid attention to that or not. Do you remember the, the Congress was opened by somebody who prayed saying in the name of Brahma. He is a Hindu God. Yeah. That has been proclaimed over your Congress. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a moment. I'm going to leave you there. So now let's stop it. Any questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> you can make a good comment if I did a good job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have any questions from what we have done, please let me know. I think we want to come back to that place where we can have our questions and answers also. That's one of the reasons I set it up like this. So we may have a, 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 a right. conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Good. So I, w I would like for us to have more of that. I mean, today, probably you are not prepared. From now on, the Bible study, I'd like for us to have this set up where we can have a QA session also. As we go through, if you have any questions, any concerns, I know I didn't take any any permission from uh, Delene, but I used you a lot in my uh, message today. I appreciate you being the salt and the and the light for us. I appreciate you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've been wonderful. I know you are far away from your family and all, but for us, uh, the Covenant Fusion Church family, you're a blessing. Amen. I just want you to know from the bottom of my heart, for me. You are a blessing. Amen. 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 You inspire me. You encourage me. So I don't know uh, what all it does it does to you, but I just want you to know. You are a harvesting lady. Keep harvesting. Thank you. Question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You said you told us what we should be a harvest church. You told us in my notes I have here. The strategies, mm -hmm. uh, reap the harvest. Mm -hmm. Okay, my question is, next week are you going to continue and tell us how to do these? How to reap the harvest, All yeah. Right. Well, I'm, try I'm, I'm starting with this. First, firstly, we have to start with this shamelessness. Right you got to first have that mindset. You want harvest? Leave your shame at the door. Without, with, if you are shameful, you will never get harvest. Yes. You need to learn how you can get what belongs to you. Okay. You should be okay with the uncomfortable times and situations. And the, 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 the secret here is disciples. There, there is a lot of mentioning here about disciples. I was going to tell you also, but since we started, I'm going to give, give you a couple things here. We can get back to it. Disciples are the ones with discipline and dedication. For you to have a harvest, you have to be a disciple. Without the discipline and dedication, you can never have a harvest. You got to have those things. And those are traits for a disciple. You cannot be a disciple without discipline. And without dedication. You got to dedicate to your harvest, you know. Oh well, we will get back to it more next week, okay? Maybe. <laughs> God willing. <laughs> All right. So um, before we end, any prayer requests or anything you might have? We're, gonna, we're, we're coming back to it. Like, I'm just going to set it up. I think we have, we have run out of time a lot today. So I'm going to stop it here today. But from next week on, next uh, Bible study on, this will be our common thing where we can have comments, questions, concerns that we might go through. You can write them down. We can uh, ask them. I might even condense it, uh, my time, so we can uh, have more of the QA interaction time, mm -hmm. as well as you can bring forth your prayer requests or anything. We can all pray together. Amen? Amen. Amen. We have to change new dimensions so to reap new harvest. Amen? Amen. I don't want my old harvest. 2020 harvest is done. It's still. 
Yes. I need 2021 harvest. Amen. Are you with me now? Yes. <laughs> and guess what? If you go after 2021 harvest, you will also reap 2020 because he is the harvester. He'll make sure you will he reap everything that belongs to you. Amen. He Amen. will not let anything go away from you. Amen. 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 All right. Glory. Yeah. Let me pray. Let me pray. Let me pray for us. Are we ready to pray? Yes. All right. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for giving us such an opportunity to spend time in your word and to study it, Lord. As your word is coming, as you are trying to encourage us, uplift us, and upbuild us, Lord, continue doing so, Lord, that we may serve you with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our might, with all that is within us, God. All the days of my life, we will serve you. And we give thanks, Lord, for no matter what happens, you are still the Lord. You are still the joy. You are still the master of the universe, God. There is nothing and nothing can change that, my God. Oh, we depend on the dependable. And we give you the glory for that. The joy of the Lord is filling me up right now in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Let's declare it. The joy of the Lord is filling me right now. Ooh, glory be to God. Glory be to God in heaven. Right now, the biggest treasure you and me have going for us is the joy of the Lord. We are stronger than ever before because the joy of the Lord is taking over us. I speak healing over the bodies that need healing, the deliverance on their minds that need deliverance, God, that we might move from the despisers to believers every day of our life, God. Amen. Help us to identify the despising moments where we are ignoring your, your doings, where we are not recognizing and acknowledging your works, Lord. Give us those eyes, give us those ears, give us, those, uh, give us that attitude that we may surrender and submit to your ways of doing things, God, that you may be magnified and glorified through us, oh yes. We bless you, we honor you, and we praise you. We have invited you, enter in, my master. We invite you continually into 2021. You have prepared a way for us, and let that be the master feast for us, God. Have your way in and through us. Your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. We are out. God bless you.